because your life is going to be fuller. You're going to achieve successes. You're going to be able to do things you really want to do. You're going to especially, 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 especially in relationships, you know? Hey, Common Sister. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are interested in anything showbiz related, common sense tips, or spiritual advice, you have come to the right place. I am so ecstatic to bring to you an extraordinary actress, singer, comedian, and just a wonderful spiritual person. Please help me welcome Suli Diaz. Suli! Hi, <laughs> Suli! So I, I just want to start with how you started, what was the bug that got you into acting? Mary Poppins. When I was five years old, my mom took me to the theater. I saw the movie. I was mesmerized and I turned around and I said, Mom, I'm gonna be an actress at five years old. And I, and I always kept my word, I guess I knew. When did you actually start to take classes and pursue your acting? I started at at a school, it's like a school for performing arts, Escuela Libre de Musica, free school of the performing arts. And I started there studying uh, acting, piano, ballet, jazz, everything. In Puerto Rico? That was in Puerto Rico, yeah. And then I uh, started studying at the University of Puerto Rico. And then I studied all over New York, different techniques, you know, uh, HB Studios. Then he, here in Puerto Rico, I, I studied Meissner's technique, which is my favorite. I was an observer at the Actors Studio in New York. I don't like too much that technique, but I was an observer and I even worked for Lee Strasberg. And one scene I was invited to, to work in front of him. And what was your first job? Well, my first job was in a show in Puerto Rico when I was 17 years old. It was one of those uh, uh, comedy shows, you know, at 12 noon, you know, I would be the girl that would come in, hi, can I use the phone, you know? That was always my first line. It was a, a gas station. That's where I started, Channel 4, WAPA TV. That was the first one. How did you get into soaps? Well, I was studying at the uh, drama department at the university, and Dean Sayas, the director, he recommended me for an audition, and I booked it. That was my first novella was Marta Llorens. Marta Llorens. <laughs> and you became pretty famous doing those telenovelas. What made you decide you wanted to come to Hollywood? I did the novellas for a while, and I did one in particular called Coralito, and that novella was uh, very special. It, it's like uh, the show that has been, you know, that the most seen show in our history. Of course, that wouldn't happen now because we can select whatever we want, Netflix and whatnot. After I had that experience, I thought, hmm, I want to I wanna cross over. I would like to do the whole world, but let's start with the United States. And I went to New York. Oh, you went to New York first. I stopped college and I went to New York and I studied acting there. And then I did a few things, legwork and with, with CBS. I did a true believer. I did a whole bunch of things, but I don't remember them like really fast, you know, cause it was such a long time ago. But uh, I did a couple of uh, American uh, TV shows and movies. Then you went to, to California what was that experience? Because at that point, you had a child? Yeah. First thing I booked there was the Ellen show when it was a sitcom, Ellen and her friends. That was the first thing I booked. And uh, it's different from New York. New York, it's all about talent and about seriousness. And I, and I felt that I belonged in New York. And when I went to Los Angeles, I, I, I didn't feel that I belonged that much until, although I was booking some jobs, but not as many as I, I wanted, I found it to be superficial. I found it, uh, you know, it was really weird. It was kind of surreal because I, I remember this. I remember actors saying, when I make it, I'm gonna do this. 
when I make it, I'm going to do that. And I'm like, what are you going to make? A pie? <laughs> what, what is this thing you're making? Uh, and that was quite weird because like the focus in, 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 in California was about being famous and being a star and people talked about it like, like, like I was saying, oh, I'm going to study at the university. Like it was, like, you know, I don't know. When it came time for me to play uh, a musical, which you saw, called La Lupe, My Life, My Destiny, which is based on a, on a legendary Cuban singer. And you were brilliant in that. I mean, you just kicked ass. You transformed in in such a way with that with that part. I was uh, doing my show downtown and I would come on the days I wasn't working to see you do your show. And you were phenomenal. I mean, you would just come on stage as La Lupe. It wasn't Suli Diaz. Suli Diaz was not in the oh, building no, while you were performing. I don't know. I don't know. I studied day and night day and night day and night day and night i i had to find underground uh tapes of her because youtube didn't exist at the moment and then i asked her fans what did she do how did she do it you know and um uh, i was so possessed by her and i has i was so well i was well studied i mean i i studied her i studied her psychology I guess an actress needed to play that part more than a singer because she was uh, uh, she was into Santeria. Then she became a born again Christian. Um, she was uh, bipolar as well. Uh, I, I studied what she felt, and then I imitated her voice as as much as I could, and it came every night, every night. You know that. Hey, she would talk like that, you know, an accent that was like very real. I, I don't know, it was weird. It was weird, but it was her. And to think that she was a diamond in the rough and she spoke that English that so broken, it was so broken, but then she did, she did Carnegie Hall. I mean, she did, she was Tito Puente's singer for such a long, I mean, she was a real crossover. And she was being herself. She didn't have to do anything. And that, that's what I loved about playing her. And also because I had the um, I had the fantasy of what it was to be a great singer, having all the audience singing your songs. So I was like in the in the in the in the in the flesh. You were manifesting it on a whole nother level. That was a blessing. It opened a door for me to become a singer. I have been singing for the longest time now, which I had studied at the Free School of Music. I, I studied singing, but I forgot about that because I was acting. And uh, I have been singing well for like 20 years now. And I combined it with stand-up comedy. It's like a one-woman show. I want to get into, um, uh, I think this, talking about La Lupe and her having bipolar, that's something that you know about. Yes, because I am. I was, um, first time I felt I, 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 there was something wrong with me was the onset was at 17 years old. Uh, as I was already working as an actress. I was in the University of Puerto Rico. I was very happy, yet I would cry myself to sleep every night. And I thought that was normal until a friend said, you cry so much, shut up. And so I, I forgot about it. I said, well, I, I better stop crying. And then at 25, when I was going to get married, uh, first time I married, I was, I was like, I'm going to get married. I'm not going to get married. I'm going to get married. I'm not going to get married. I mean, one day I wanted one. And from an hour to another, I would change. I did get married, you know, but that's when I saw what I had. I went to the doctor who said, uh, you have a condition and we have to treat it with lithium. Lithium, you know, it will make your moods, it will balance your moods. And then I thought, yeah, but I'm an actress. Maybe I'm oversensitive, but this being oversensitive is good for my acting. 
what if I become so, you know, chill that if I have to cry in a scene or if I have to have a strong scene, I, I, I can't do it. And he said, you know, that is something to think about. And so I did not get med medication at that time either. It wasn't until I turned 35 that I started to get medication. And thank God I did because this is horrible. Because when you're in a manic period, you can do unexplicable things, you know, things that in your right mind you would not do. So what is being manic? It's like you're having like a hundred and thousand thoughts in your mind racing. It's like, uh, but inside here. And you can't do anything about it. You're just going crazy. You can't sleep. Sometimes, some, one time I went almost five nights without sleeping. And then the depressive period, you know, that that's when you're depressed, you're crying, you don't want to do anything, you don't want, you don't want to get out of the house, you don't want to open the door. Uh, sometimes even, you know, uh, some people don't want to bathe and, you know, it was horrible. So then I started getting treatment. And the thing is that it's a very selfish condition because it's all about you, you know, and you end up hurting yourself and hurting people around you if they're caught in one of your manic periods, which could last from months to weeks to days to hours. And then there's rapid cycling when you go from one thing to the other. So thank God that has been taken care of. So you started getting medicated after you had GEO. I was uh, uh, making wrong decisions. I said, you know, I really have to take a look at this. And, and thank God I did. You know, I, I, I'm a better person now than then. I, I strive to be a better person. And not only medication and therapy, but also my belief in, in, in Jesus. So for actors out there who are watching this and listening and, and have bipolar um, episodes, or they are bipolar and they don't know it, what could you tell them to help them that they would want to go and, and get it checked out? Because your life is going to be fuller. You're going to achieve successes. You're going to be able to do things you really want to do. You're going to especially, 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 especially in relationships, you know, uh, partnerships, you know there because you know when you have a partner it's 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 like a mirror your partner is a mirror so you definitely have to take a look at it and, and and work it out to get the right medication to get the right uh, help that takes time that takes within eight months to three years to get the right dose for you or whatever the, the right treatment it takes time but you should really look into it. You shouldn't let it go because it gets worse and worse and worse. So let me ask you a question because you said that you didn't want to take the medication because you didn't want it to affect your acting or your creativity. But once you started taking it, what happened to your creativity, your acting, your performance? How, how did it alter it? Good question because it did. And it was very highly embarrassing. Um, I went through different uh, uh, different uh, medications, and uh, and once I was doing a movie, a very important movie, with a crew of 150 people around me, and I had to cry, and I had just started taking this medication, this new medication. I had been on it for like seven days. Oh my God, Lydia! They said action, and I'm like. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Not only that, I forgot my lines. I kept forgetting my lines. I kept because I kept I kept getting uh, more anxious, anxious yes. about it. And so finally, I said, Jesus, please don't leave me like this. And finally, I did the scene, but it did affect my acting. So that's why I'm saying the road to recovery takes time, and you have to be diligent and really want it. When you were doing La Lupe, you were on medication? or yeah. So, so yeah. let's talk about that because you had to hit so many uh, highs and lows within the performance. 
you have to go to so many emotional places in, in that show. So how were you able to do it with that Medicaid? You know what I mean? Like, had you figured out how to, how to maneuver your technique uh, and, and balance it with the medication? My body was already used to that medication. So it was like, it was normal. The reaction to that was feeling normal. And uh, with the Lupe, I mean, the character just gave me everything. You know, I studied so hard. I studied so hard. I, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> but it wasn't because I was uh, a poet. It was because I was so preoccupied. Because when you are, uh, when you are playing someone, a real person, it's a big responsibility. Because you have to be exactly like them. And I, I did have great moments with that because um, some people from the religion, Santeria, they were like, oh my God, I don't want to touch her. Jemaja is going to come down. Oh my God. <laughs> they would leave flowers, you know, yellow flowers because um, she was the daughter of Ochung. People really thought I was possessed. To me, you just emerged as such a great artist because you were able to combine music and comedy and drama and and the emotion of it you know it was the emotion that you brought to it you know the connection that you had with her the love you had for her and it all just kind of it all you you left it all on the stage you never you never um, gave less than 110 percent so it was always wonderful to watch you and what I loved was that it was sold out every friggin night you're telling me that and I'm gonna get teary and all that because I love her so much you know that woman gave me a singing career which yes. I didn't have you yes know? that's not the end of the story then you decided to go back to school tell I us about that I always wanted to finish my bachelor's degree, always, but every time I enrolled, something came up, a movie or a series or, or a novella or something came up and I had to not study. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't study. So in uh, 2012, I said, this is it. I'm gonna finish my bachelor's. And uh, it didn't matter. They offered me stuff, and I said no. I remember one semester, I took twelve credits, which was hard. And but I finished in two thousand nineteen. I graduated, and then when I went to pick up my certificate, and I'm saying this not because I want to brag or anything. It's just that life has surprises for you. That if you don't dare to do things you won't get them. But when I went to get my, uh, my, my certification, they, they were smiling and waiting for me, Suli, why didn't you come? You graduated with honors. And I'm like, what? I'm what? I did what? Because I think that when you're an actor and in between acting jobs, uh, your mind could get very lazy. You know, although I, I was always a reader, let me tell you, those years that I studied at the university were heaven to me because receiving all that knowledge, it, I felt like golden nuggets to me. I felt so wonderful to learn all these things. And then uh, I, I, I made friends with all the professors and, 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 and whatnot. I, I, I wrote essays. I studied I woke up at four o'clock in the morning to study because that's when I'm smart. Mm -hmm. After four o'clock, I, I, I become dumb dumb. I can't do anything after four o'clock. You know, it has to be. So I did finish that and it was so rewarding. I wish my mom could have seen me because she wanted me to, to finish it. <laughs> now, was it before or after that you started teaching acting? At the same time and at the University of Puerto Rico throughout a program called Continued Education. But because of my, uh, my resume, because of all my experience, um, and my experience on camera, uh, they offered me to be uh, a professor at the university. So, wow, I, I couldn't believe it. And then I would, 
I, I, I pride myself being a really good acting teacher, very loving, and I can spot talent. I can spot uh, what people are good at. And uh, I build in their security. I, I first look for, for where they're really good at, and I let them know. And then they feel secure and they dare to work in front of me. And I have students that are working in Hollywood, are working in, 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 in Spain, and are doing such amazing things. And I feel so proud and I feel part of that. I feel like it's happening to me. One of the things that I love about you is your instinct. You can feel stuff and go, yeah, that, that no, I don't know about that. That's not, or yes, that works or whatever. And, and which I think is amazing because in spite of you having a bipolar condition, it doesn't affect your instinct. As an acting teacher, mm -hmm. how do you take that and, and use it as your special power? I believe in what, in what uh, um, Meissner said about acting. Acting is living with truth an imaginary situation. I believe that the imagination is the most powerful thing humans have to create things, obviously, because you have to create it in your head first. And an example for that uh, is when you're jealous. You're in love with this man, and you think he's having another woman, and you're jealous, and that brain takes off and you start inventing all sorts of scenarios which are not true but they're not true but you believe it it's not the truth but you believe it you really believe it the brain has that power and i uh and then working through your imagination i think it's not painful as working well sense memory i don't believe in that uh i believe in the circumstances first of all um, and listening, uh, uh, my special power with actors, that's what you asked, my special power. It's not a special power, it's just that I build based on their security. I find where they feel secure. I, uh, I just tell them, stand up there and do something for me. Do you have anything? Have you done anything when you were a kid in school? Uh, whatever. And they do it, or or they t or ask them to, to tell me about their lives, and then there I see what they feel, what makes them tick, what makes them hurt, what makes them feel wonderful. What you know, I I I'm just, I'm, I'm just like a hawk. I'm observing, and I'm I'm listening to every single word they're saying, and so I start with that. I start with their securities, and then I, I give them a scene. Uh, and if it's a scene, it's a long scene, I cut it. I make them real short first so I can see, so they so they don't feel uh, that they have too much to work on and they can concentrate on who am I, what am I doing, what do I want, how am I going to get it, uh, you know, all, the, all these questions that you ask yourself. And then, boop, forget about them all and just be present, listen, and react. That's my superpower as a teacher, that I come from their strengths. And what do you think your superpower is as an artist? My superpower is my faith in Jesus. Everything I do, everything I have achieved is only because of him. Because after everything has been said and done, he's the only thing or person that makes me feel good. How do you replenish your artistic well? say when you were doing La Lupe and then it finished and you had depleted yourself, you know, you were depleted because you kept giving, giving. Honey, I have so much energy that I can give it away and I still have some. I, I, I don't even know what I do. I just, I'm just, the show finished, it finished, let me go home. Let's have maybe a drink or maybe a hangout or a little bit and that's it. Go, go to sleep early because you have a show tomorrow, you know. Just be responsible with my body, with my body and my mind, especially mind. Yes. So what actors have you been on set with that really taught you something that you still use today? 
I did a movie in Spain. It's called La Mala, La Mala in Spain. And uh, I worked with this Cuban actress, which is in a, in a series in Netflix right now, a Spanish series from Spain called uh, Bisabis. Bisabis. Well, her name is Maria Diaz. And I saw her before starting the movie, before starting my part. I saw her acting. And I, I just observed. And then I followed her all day. I wasn't supposed to work that day, but I said, I'm not leaving. I have to watch this girl. She was playing my sister, and we had sibling rivalry. So it was good. So I observed her, and I observed her. And without her saying a word to me, she taught me how to act in front of a camera. I don't know how, how I can explain that, but I'm so grateful to her. I, I tell her that, and she didn't do anything. I was just watching her, but she made it so clear what had to be done that that movie, I mean, we had, we had scenes together that were amazing. I mean, I was into that movie and I forgot my, my ego too, because I wasn't looking too pretty in that movie either. I was, I was, I was supposed to be older, so they had to put some wrinkles and I committed suicide. So she was like always down in the dumps. But um, yeah. So is there one thing from what she taught you on how to act in front of the camera that you can articulate? I took it in by instinct. Okay. I cannot put it in words, but I do think that acting for the camera is concentration, 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 concentration. Because you know that when they say action, you have to have whatever feeling it is ready, there, smack, ready for your disposal. So I would say it's concentration. You know, after all the, the studying that you have to do, the who, why now, you know, what I said before, uh, and listening, after all of that has been done, you got to concentrate. I was doing this film, and my son died in my arms. He was a gang member. And I had to do that scene for eight hours, you know, that they, they start with the long shot, medium shots, then close-ups, then extreme close-ups and uh, i remember every time they said cut i sat in a chair and i just remained like that because let's say i went to have lunch and potato chips or drink some coffee and and, and socialize you know my state of mind uh, was gone and then i would have to work so much harder to get back into that place Whereas if I stayed in that place for those eight hours, there was no way that I was going to be out of concentration. And that's exactly the way it was. Every time, every time they did it again and again and again and again, I was there. I was there. I remember people bringing me coffee to my chair. I'm like, but I was like this, like that, concentrated because it was so such a, a, an emotional scene. I could not even imagine that. But, God bless my son, you know. Um, so concentration. When you're prepping for for acting role, what is your ritual? To be alone. I need to be alone. I can't be with people around me. I cannot be with people around me at all. I have to remain in my dressing room or in my camper or whatever. And I only relate to you when we're working. And uh, I don't joke. Because, I, as I said before, the concentration, everything is in your head because none of it is really happening. It's all in your head. So I, I need to be alone. I am not, I, I don't socialize much when I'm working. Well, that is all our time for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave your feedback, your comments. Everything um, is in the description of how to get a hold of Suli, how to find out more about her. And thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, see ya.